Appreciate attending this morning. It's uh, before the conference floor opens, so I know everybody's making an effort to be here, and I appreciate that. Um, I'd like to thank the PDAC for inviting us, or an to be part of this uh, State of Mineral Finance Report again for the second time now in a row, and offering us the opportunity to present uh, for 10 minutes some of our findings that we've been looking at and we've been uh, sharing with the PDAC for this report. Just uh, waiting for the presentation to be pulled up here so we can get going. Um, I got 10 minutes, but uh, we discussed with Ram earlier that uh, we'll do Q&A afterwards because we're so data focused. If you have any specific questions, feel free to follow po up with us afterwards. You know, Orin Inc., we're a junior mining data provider. We're solely focused on the Canadian markets. We track financings on the TSX Venture, the TSXV, uh, the TSXV, the TSX, and the CSE, obviously. Uh, by last account, there's 1,352 companies we're tracking. Um, we used some numbers from the TSX and the CSE to, to come up with that calculation. Um, we're logging up to 46 data points uh, per financing, and what makes our job really hard, there's no standardized press release or something, so we're going through each press release manually and uh, track companies with that regard. Uh, we have an in-house data analyst, and we provide sector reports as uh, the State of Mineral Finance report we just did with the PDNC. So, really important and something for your perspective when I start talking about numbers. Uh, we're tracking only the junior mining market, so we cut off at a capital a market cap of $1.5 billion Canadian, and we don't uh, track financings above $100 million, and you'll see why in a second. One thing that makes Orning quite unique, um, you know, everybody can read a press release, put it in an Excel sheet, and uh, go on with that, but we've created the Orning Index, and uh, that sort of tracks the, Orning, the, the overall financing activity in the space. We got this data going back to 2011, and uh, you'll see that 100 level benchmark is actually uh, set, or was set in January 2011 when the market was very frothy, and uh, we've been trying to live up to those expectations ever since. Um, you can see here at the end, and I think there's a laser pointer here as well, uh, just last week we've seen a spike in financing activity, and you'll notice that our index is heavily weighted towards broker and uh, broker activity uh, in the space, because this shows us, or tells us quite exactly uh, whether you can make money in this industry because the brokers earn their fees uh, by working on finances. So 2018, you know, Rand hinted at a lot of it already, um, but I think I found some really useful data about the CSE, and it shows us exactly how, how much of trouble the mining space was or what kind of headwinds we were finding. So this is solely for the CSE. We couldn't find any numbers for the TSX in that regard, but I think it paints a really clear picture that uh, on the CSE there were 20, 270 transactions in the cannabis space and they raised a total of $3.99 billion. If you remember RAND slides, I think we barely touched $3 billion in the mining space last year. And these are just the numbers for the cannabis space on the CSC, excluded any other financings. So and, uh, only $217 million were raised on the CSC for mining. Um, I'm just going to leave you with that, but it paints a very clear picture. So, and uh, coming back to my point of broker activity and uh, what we're looking at here in for the for the Oregon Index, there were no commissions to be made. I recently talked to a couple of brokers in Vancouver and they said, hey, thanks Kai for reaching out, you know, thanks for you know, talking about mining with us, but we couldn't get us. We, all we do right now is cannabis. There's no money to be made in mining broker and deals at this point. Um, actually, I had a good conversation just before coming down here with Rick Rule, and uh, he actually made me more optimistic again about this space. So it was quite an... Uh, otherwise, it would have been very sobering just to stand here and talk about you know financing activity. But he put things in a bit of perspective, so I'm looking forward to the next nine months here in this space. Um, you can see the the number of brokered activity, and what I want to find out is really the brokered deals, the bought deals. We've seen a massive decline in it. Uh, we've only seen three bought deals in 2019 so far for a total of barely over 60 million dollars. Uh, I think Bluestone Resources just upsized their financing, so that's a positive indicator. Um, so we're closer to 70 billion, uh, 70 million, sorry. Um, in terms of bought deals, but it's still nowhere where we need to go. Um, the cold hard truth, part one, obviously, and uh, Rand hinted at that uh, in his, some of his slides as well, uh, is the total number of deals has significantly dropped. Uh, if you need any more indication that we're back in a bear market in mining, we're just fighting very, very strong headwinds, whatever you want, if, however you want to see it or look at it, uh, the total number of deals is back to the 2015 level. And uh, so far in 2019, we haven't seen that much activity. And uh, I think quoting Rick Rule again is actually a great word. 
he said even February goes glacial. There wasn't much happening um, in the space. There's a lot of money available. You see exploration successes do get rewarded. Companies run the company that silver crafts, high grade silver in Mexico. Market loves it. Story runs. They were able to raise money, oversubscribe bought deals, and corporate finances. But in general, there's not too much activity in this space. Um, Covert Truth Part 2, obviously, and Red mentioned that as well. We've seen a massive decline in uh, the dollars raised year over year. And uh, we're down to close to 2.8 billion for the numbers for the companies that we track. And keep in mind that's companies below $1.5 billion and financing below $100 million. Uh, one positive side aspect, uh, aspect of everything, uh, we're seeing uh, the number of smaller deals. Yes, we've seen uh, you know, the average deal size decline, obviously, a bit as well. As companies are struggling to keep the lights on or just trying to raise meaningful dollars for their exploration programs. But the average deal size is still not as bad as it was 2015. And that has me slightly optimistic as well, that we're still seeing good quality deals being uh, financed. Um, flow through, it really saved our bacon uh, last year. And uh, let's say gold drops to 1050 tomorrow, which is not on what won't happen. But uh, you know, flow through has been a, a savior for many companies to avoid the death spiral in junior mining. And uh, as you can see, 18.7% of total dollars raised was actually flow through financing. And uh, that helps companies still generate news flow, stay relevant, and continue working, especially Canadian companies. And uh, I think that is a something that we should focus on as well. You need to flee to safe haven, obviously Canadian projects, with the ability to raise money. Uh, looking ahead, um, this is my last slide. One, one thing that our data clearly shows is actually seasonality, although it's flattened out a little bit in 2018, and we've seen a decline, obviously, over the course of the year. But again, this year we've seen an early seasonality, early seasonality kick in. The first eight weeks are always fantastic before it slows down. And uh, what Rand mentioned, and uh, you know, he tried to avoid the answer, but uh, what, what, what's, what's happening uh, in 2019? He said, "Stay tuned." Well, we've got seasonality playing with us. There's a, you know, there's positive momentum. There's stuff happening in this space. Exploration success is being rewarded. Um, financing for cannabis, actually, to quote the CEO of the CSE, he says the Canadian cannabis companies are actually fully financed right now, so we're only competing with the U.S. Um, for financing dollars in terms of cannabis. But uh, there should be a positive. And I see this is a full room. There's a lot of activity in the financing space. There's interest, and uh, I'm looking forward to the remaining nine months of this year. And uh, you know, Rand mentioned some things in terms of uh, triggers. Obviously, broker activity needs to pick up. Mega mergers could be interesting. What do we see that like, coming out of the Barrick Newmont deal if it does happen, uh, or even the Moon of Gold deal that seems to be sealed? Um, mid-tier mid -tier mining companies have been created out of these mega mergers, so there is activity. Um, for, for investors to do make some money in this space, participate in financing, and of course we need to positive metal price support as well. And part of that is in those China trade talks and see where this is going. I think any deal will be positive and uh, should sort of release us from that uncertainty that we, that had us in a stranglehold for the last couple of months. Um, I'm here at the conference for the next two days, uh, so feel free to reach out to us um, if you have any questions in regard to data and. Uh, or any uh, You can see I'm taping this presentation. We'll try to upload it if the quality is decent enough. And uh, yeah, thanks for having us. Uh, thanks again to the PDAC and appreciate the time.